Fellow Nigerians, good day and thank you um, uh, for listening in. Um, I, I want to spend a little bit of time today to talk to you about the recent change that we've done in terms of the sale of uh, PMS. And I know that a lot of you who uh, watch the movement in price from 8650 to 145 and, and scream where we headed. The reality is that uh, at the prices we sold before, we weren't able to continue to bring in these products. And that's why you've seen systemic queues all over the country. And it's gone on for a very long time. And I would urge you to, to trust that we're trying to do what is right. Uh, and if there's no better time to, to do this than under the leadership of His Excellency President Buhari, whom we at least we all uh, know and believe uh, is forthright, uh, focused, and will apply whatever benefits come from this liberalization of the sale of PMS uh, to development of the rest of uh, the needy areas of the country. Now, why, why did we have to do this? First one, we came into position in August of last year. Um, about 600 billion naira was being owed uh, to petroleum marketers. So all of them basically uh, seized important products. And this, this money was being owed historically from before we came in. We worked very hard and got that paid sometime in November. But then so soon thereafter, there wasn't available uh, enough effects for them to use. Indeed, there was no effects available at all for them to use to be able to import uh, PMS. Uh, we struggled back and forth. Some individuals on their own, uh, utilizing their own resources, did bring in products. But it was very insignificant, very marginal. So NMPC found itself uh, moving from its traditional historical position of providing about 55% of the uh, daily consumption for Nigerians uh, to a point where it was now providing nearly 90% of, of, of that, of that uh, product flow. We struggled uh, because different from providing the product, you had to create the logistics that was essential. You had to uh, steer STS it from the vessels, take it to the depots, uh, truck it out, about 1,600 uh, truck deployment on a daily basis to different parts of the country. So we struggled with being able to fund the importation. We struggled with uh, the logistics that was involved uh, in having to harness this all over the country because most of the people who were active in this basically pulled out. But yet, uh, we're pragmatic enough to say, first, we needed to address the subsidy problem so that we do not have it again. And I'm glad that we did, and effective January, uh, we stopped uh, payment of subsidy. But that was going to be dependent on the price modulation and our ability to continue to keep track of those prices. So for January to March, uh, we had no subsidies because price modulation was able to enable us over recover in such a way that there was no need uh, for us to pay subsidy to anybody. But of course, by April, the problem wasn't, um, because at that point, there was a near dry up of uh, foreign exchange facilities uh, for people to bring in products. So again, NMPC had to move in. But you see, for NMPC to do, um, supply you products over and above the 50% that it has, it basically forward buys. It places um, uh, other federation crude um, at risk. And, and so the bubble was getting close to Boston. So really, we did this. The main why, what we did is different from the fact of the uh, uh, problem of foreign exchange, is that we're getting to a point where there was really no other alternative other than doing this. And that's still what it is today. If we continue with what we're doing today, by next month, a governors won't be able to pay salary. Already, some of them are owing three or four months' salaries. So, so for each extra cargo uh, of crew that you take from the governors from FARC, it means a salary that is not paid in one state or the other. Uh, for each extra cargo that you take, it means development that cannot take place. And for each extra cargo you take and each more product that you supply, it means marketers whose businesses were crumbling and, quite frankly, staff were being laid off. So we were in a very crisis, bad crisis mode. And that's why you saw that the, there was a systemic queue. We, we, sol we, we solved it because we were putting a lot of energy at it, a lot of solutions to it, but it comes right back. Because ultimately, the problem was supply. Supply won't happen unless you have the instruments of supply. So that is why we, we had to do this. Of course, you, you ask, why did you not have foreign exchange? Simple. Uh, usually, we produce 2.2 million barrels of oil. Uh, technically, about 1 million barrels uh, will go to us after the JV partners have taken their own share. And then from this 1 million barrels, the federal government will allocate 445,000 barrels to enable us either refine or import refined petroleum products. The rest is sold um, uh, in international markets and money put into FAC. The difficulty, however, was that the 445, as we applied it, had to go to refineries. Refineries were not working when we came in, so we sold the crude. But as soon as refineries began to work, about five of those potential 14 cargoes that comprise 445,000 barrels were sent to the refinery. So you were left with a, a lot less to import product. Then, of course, there were historical obligations that had been incurred by the previous governments, which had not been paid, and those had been tied into the 445 scheme. 
So at the end, you had less of the 445 cargo than you even needed to deploy. But even if you had it all, it was meant to provide you only 55% uh, of national consumption. So the, the reality was that you didn't have the barriers to throw at it. You didn't have the funding to throw at it. For our government was bleeding massively and continues to bleed. Today, after the 2.2 million barrels, the production today is about 1.4. Because militants uh, and the attacks on, on production platforms have taken, have taken away literally about 800,000 barrels. So today it is even going to get worse. Uh, uh, by the time we decided to make, take this decision, we were probably hovering about 1.8, 1.9. Today it's at 1.4. So obviously we need to do something in terms of recovering, recovering those barrels back. Once you do not have your barrels, foreign exchange does not come in. So your foreign exchange was depleting. And the question was, what would you do with the limited foreign exchange that you have? And the president made a very right choice, which was to leave what you have intact so that you do not run into a state of bankruptcy for the country. Once you've made that decision, and therefore that there was no foreign exchange to be able to allocate to the private sector to bring in PMS, the options were literally, quite frankly, uh, uh, next, to, next to nothing. The, option, the only option you had was to find a way of creating a liberalized uh, trading environment so people can bring in their products, source their money from secondary market, charged at the right price, which they will not do unless the, the pricing was right. That is what we did. Fellow Nigerians, the reality was that we were left with no option than what we did. All of you know how opposed uh, to uh, a liberal or a privatization or uh, model that the president is. And so you will know that this must have been a very difficult decision for, for him to take. If he had other options, he would not have. We had no option. Now. What do we expect from now? What we expect is that all these parties will get out, bring in their products, sell at the prices that we band that we have. But you're going to see a lot of efficiency on the table. Never mind about the price now. If you watch what happened with diesel, with AGO, it started that way. Today, diesel prices are 40 percent down, and there's a surplus a supply of diesel all over the country. That will also happen with, with, with petrol. Because once, they throw, once Nigerians throw their skills, their trading skills at it, once competition becomes ripe, people, the prices will begin to tumble down. My guess is that in under four, five, maybe six months, you will see those prices begin to take, become more stable and definitely lower than the prices that you see today. But what, it, what this allows us to do is that each time there's a, a, a barrel movement or crude price movement, we can adjust to it through market fundamentals. The price modulation that we introduce will be used as a mechanism to try and guide the pricing, not to dictate, but to guide. Because ultimately, the market, the free market forces will force that dictate, will tell what the prices will be. And we believe that the competition inherent in the system will help us drive down the prices. Now, what is this going to help us achieve also? Refineries finally um, can begin to work. We're already, we've done a lot of work. We've been able to recover two of the pipelines leading to um, uh, worry and leading to Potakwa refineries. For the first time in about 10 years, we have the three refineries working at the same time, so that helps. But those refineries are working at 50% of their capacity. We expect to put in investments to get into 90% capacity. So, for the first time, you have a bit of money from the savings on NNPC's portion of this increase to be able to address some of these refineries in addition to uh, loans from joint venture partners. For the first time, you can address the upgrades of uh, depots that had all been dilapidated, 19 of them all over the country, only about three functional ones. For the first time, you can begin to look at how to replace pipelines, because our pipelines are about 35 years old. They're degraded, they're aged, they're out of use, largely. So it's been one massive problem after another massive problem, just trying to stabilize product supply in the country. But the time has come to take on the problem bullishly, and that is what we're trying to do. So we believe that there will be money for infrastructural development in, 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 the, in the downstream sector. We believe that a lot of the private companies will, will, will jump up now, uh, be able to sell at the right prices, not be hunkered down by the problems of price control, and be able to grow their businesses. We believe that the most efficient ones will drive prices southwards rather than northwards. And we believe that ultimately over 200,000 jobs, new jobs will be created in this sector because of this liberalization. And over 400,000 jobs will be saved, which would have been lost had we continued on the path we're in. I urge you Nigerians not to give up. Uh, do not be disillusioned. Forgive us if you feel pain by what we do. But you sent us to serve. And the day some of us who came from the private sector to work for you can no longer make the right decisions that will enable us to arrive at the right solutions for this country, then we have lost our mandate to be there. 
I assure you that we're doing the very best we can. I assure you that this was the only option open to us. I assure you that we're going to make sure that efficiencies return to help drive down prices. And I assure you that sooner or later, once this takes hold, you'll find a disappearance of the troublesome queues that you found all over Nigeria. Something that was making everybody lose, uh, translating the cost of purchase, the real cost of purchase of petroleum products to over 250 naira per litre. And the reality is that it was only in the areas of Lagos and some of the key cities, Lagos, Abuja, that you found people even attempting to buy product at 85 naira. The reality was that most parts of the hinterland, occupied by the poorest of our masses, were buying products at between 150 to 300 naira. That is key. And all we have done is to say there's no need to continue to run a subsidy regime that was creating a lot of problems for us. Uh, people have tended to give uh, titles to this, deregulation, subsidy removal, whatever. I tend not to be caught up in those grammatical nomenclatures. What we try to do is basic, apply basic common sense to enable us to survive for tomorrow. I thank you for listening, and I hope this answers a lot of your questions. Thank you.